Okay, now I'm going to show you how to take a montage tilt series. So I've already found my cell of interest and added its position here in the navigator so I don't lose it. And I've opened up the dose meter here on the microscope control because I need to bake out the sample and I like to take it to about 1500 to 2000 electrons. And at fairly low mag, because this is a montage, I really want to make sure that the sample gets thoroughly baked because you get end up with a lot of distortions between the different panels if you don't do this. We've gotten to 1500 electrons of total dose, so now I can take myself to the imaging mag and find an area of interest on the cell. So here we go. You can see the dose increases dramatically as we increase the mag. Now I'm going to, what I need to do next is do eucentricity, so I'm going to do both uh, rough and fine. Eucentricity is finished and I see that I have a lateral displacement uh, that's bigger than one micron away from zero. This lateral displacement um, is a measurement of the distance of the optical axis from the tilt axis and so we can correct for that in Serial EM by going to tasks set tilt axis offset, accept the value, say OK, and you'll see that we've now accumulated an image shift that was equivalent to the lateral displacement. So I'm going to reset the image shift and then just make sure that my aperture is still centered. And then I like to do fine eucentricity again just to make sure that this wasn't an anomaly. Fine eucentricity has finished and you can see our lateral displacement is much closer to zero. This means we'll have very few image shift resets during tilt series acquisition. Okay, so I'm at the magnification I desire. I'm going to go ahead and just take a record image to see what everything looks like. Pretty good. Um, and I'm going to set up my montage. So I go to File, New Montage. I want to make this a vertical stripe, so I'm going to make it a 1 by 3 montage. Save all of the information in the extended header. And save the file, montage1a.st. And then I'll just take a pre-scan. Just going to right click and drag that a little bit to recenter. Take a new pre-scan. Now sometimes um, if you haven't tried to take a montage at this magnification, it will ask you to calibrate the image shift. So I will show you how that works. You say calibration image shift. It takes trial images. I know those look fine, so I am ready to proceed. Okay. Then it gives you an indication of how well it went. If we say OK. And now we are ready to just do another pre-scan, double check that everything is centered how we like it. I think this looks fine. So now I'm ready to take my record image that will be used to align the tilt series from the beginning. Okay, so here's our record image. I'm going to do uh, check the min-max mean. You can either use the menu system or the hotkey. And I have 17,000 counts. This is pretty good. So I'm ready to set it up. All right, so I like to go 60 to minus 60. In this case, we'll just do two degree increments. And then for beam intensity, I set the beam intensity to keep mean counts of the record image at 8,500 for our camera. Your camera may be different. And I like to have my record uh, set up at zero tilt to be pretty high compared to my target counts. This way I can check this box that says keep intensity below current value and it's very important that it's only used if you've already set up your intensity and the idea here is to make the beam as small as possible that you're comfortable with and then that's it. It'll never get smaller than that and so this way you don't have any chances of the edge of the beam getting in the image and I find this is a much safer way to go. Also it'll give you an idea if you're about twice as much 
um, at zero, uh, zero degrees than your target, that means at 60 degrees you should have enough beam to actually get 8,500 counts in this case. Okay, so I like to focus every time at high tilt, and every three degrees or so, just force it to autofocus. Now we have already have the center of our montage area in buffer A, so we're fine there. And for safety's sake, I usually have it close the column valves at the end of the series. You can have it repeat the record uh, montage if you need to, in case what you have of interest is really fills up the entire um, image. I'm not going to do that. Okay, I always track before I focus, and I'm ready to go. So I just say go, and then I'm going to say end loop so that at the very top of the tilt series I can just check out the first image and make sure everything looks good, that it's not a lot of drift, I've got decent counts, that sort of thing. So we're walking up to 60 degrees first. Now we're going to focus. And now we have to correct for the backlash, which is the sort of sloppiness in the stage. So you can see we tilt to about 63 degrees, come back to 60, so that we're now tilting in the correct direction. Focus one more time, and then you'll see we'll take the three panels of the montage, which always start at the bottom of Y and work their way up. There's the first panel. If you look at the buffer status, you'll see it's uh, piece 1 in X and piece 2 in Y, and now it just did 3. So at the end, what you'll see, let me just scooch this over, you'll get our extra output box, which if you remember under tilt series extra output, you can tick this box. That allows you to get a little um, stack that you can uh, look through. And you'll see in the B buffer the entire um, montage image. And if you go up to the A buffer, you'll see the center image that's used for aligning during the tilt series acquisition. Okay, so now I'm happy with what we have, so I'm going to say resume. And I want to do the next thing, uh, which is um, just to go on to the next tilt. So I'm going to resume with the next action in sequence and say go. Now that the tilt series has finished, we can look at our extra output window and movie through it using the page up, page down keys and look to make sure that the tilt series is fine. It looks totally reasonable. So now we go to tilt series terminate. Yes, we want to terminate, but no, we don't want to save any rotated images for the B axis. Then I always tilt back to zero just for the safety of the compu stage. Then we close the log file and open a new log which will be ready for the next tilt series.